Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. Our 75th episode. Holy crap, 75 episodes. Anyway, uh, 75th episode, Spider-Man Far From Home, which I have just seen. Just left the theater. Uh, time is now 8.50-ish. Um, Tuesday night. Um... I'm conflicted about this movie. Number one, this movie does follow up Endgame, and that's pretty big shoes to fill. It, even f- if it were to follow up Captain Marvel, that's pretty big shoes to fill. And I think that the first half of the movie and the second half of the movie are two entirely disconnected um, kind of, you know, plot threads. They're, they're not plot threads, but like it feels like there's a substantial quality difference between the first half of the movie and the second half of the movie. The movie gets substantially better in the second half of the movie. And I'm saying, as I say in the title of the of the the podcast, "Beware of Spoilers," I do spoil it. I do spoil the movie when I talk about it. Um, this is a spoiler filled review of Spider Man: Far From Home. Um, one of the things I want to point out right off the bat: uh, post credit scene. There are two. Um, the second one you can kind of skip it's not that important it's just showing that you know the scrolls are still there it's still active the first post credit scene is the more important of the two of them um and it's um it's a doozy i've never seen a reaction um to the end of a scene and it going to credits like like this because like keep in mind i'm 25 um I've never seen a movie theater reaction in this way. Um, basically what happens is, you know, he's swinging with MJ and, you know, they're, you know, going, flipping, releasing, you know. He lands, she's like, let's never do that again. He goes, I gotta go do something. So he goes and he's up on a lamp pole. And then uh, news starts and the news is like, we have exclusive video of Mysterio in his final moments um, saying that Spider-Man caused everything um, using Stark tech. Um... And then it, they go to this. Uh, um, this news is brought to us from controversial news site, uh, the Daily mm-hmm. Bugle. And then it goes to, it cuts to the, and then they show the the footage from the, uh, the uh, the Daily Bugle. And there's J.K. Simmons reprising his role as uh, J. Jonah Jameson, screaming about how Spider Man's a menace. Spider Man's the one who's you know causing this, and he's a bad guy. And one of the things that's kind of noticeable and it's intentional and it's something that you can kind of pick up that they're doing kind of across all media is they've turned, they've, they had to modernize uh, J. Jonah Jameson because the concept of a overbearing newspaper editor doesn't quite resonate with people anymore. So like if you listen to, if you play Marvel Spider-Man on uh, the PS4, he is, um, what's it called? Uh... He is, uh, he's a podcaster. He, he does, uh, Just the Facts with J, uh, with J. Jonah Jameson talking about, you know, talking about Spider-Man and how Spider-Man's evil and all of that. Um, even if you play the Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, it's the same kind of thing where he's, he's a internet radio guy and he's, a, he's an internet, he's a, he's more like a live streamer, um, kind of introducing all the levels and kind of summing the story up for you up until that point. Um, and they continue it here because the Daily Bugle would function as a tabloid, but in a, in a day and age where the National Enquirer is on its way out, and you know even the Daily News and the New York Post are kind of you know that that's kind of the the market that the Daily Bugle had in in its you know in it in the fiction is it was kind of the New York Post or the Daily News, um, which was like not quite as good as the New York Times. John Mulaney said it's like someone read the New York Times to you and gave you a Cliff Notes version of it. Um, that, that and that's what the Daily Bugle is. It's shock value. It's a tabloid. Um, and what's the modern tabloid in you know 2019? It's not a tabloid newspaper. People are picking it up at uh, at a newsstand anymore. It's Alex Jones and Infowars, and that's what they model them after. And when you see the scene and the way that the shot is done, it's very much modeled after the Infowars setup. When you see clips of Alex Jones ranting like an idiot online. Um, and that's what it's designed to look like, because that's what he, that's what they're trying to channel with him. Um, and the final thing in the scene is the reveal to the public of Spider-Man's identity. And they reveal Spider-Man as Peter Parker to the general public. Um, this is going to get a lot of mixed reaction online. 
plain and simple. This is going to be a, um, what's it called? Um, this is going to be a, uh, uh, something that's going to get a lot of, a lot of conflict. I am with this decision and let me tell you why. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, no one has a secret identity. It's what sets Spider-Man as kind of the odd man out in everything that's going on. He's the only one who is, uh, you know, w- uh, works, you know, in an anonymity. And I think in a post-Civil War world where they want all the heroes to be kind of, you know, known, so that they can be held accountable, I, I think it makes sense that in this world, Spider-Man should have his identity released too. And I think the best way for that to happen is he's 16, and I think that you can get a lot of story going out of him, this happening, this, I don't want to say outing without his without his consent, because that sounds like he's coming out of the closet, and that's not what I mean, but they're, they're, they're exposing this, they're exposing him in this way without his consent. And now that's a lot, and that's, even in this movie, it's like, in the first movie, it's not really addressed too much that he has secret identity. In this movie, it's kind of, you know, Held, it, it, it kind of, he kind of brings it up a few times where he's like, we like, no one knows I'm Spider Man, no one can know I'm Spider Man because it puts people at risk, and that's kind of been Spider Man's whole thing, um, in the comics is that he he keeps his secret. He's kind of you know one of the the he he's one of the people who you know keeps his secret so that way, uh, people around him don't get hurt, is his is big thing, um, so. That and and I think that this going forward would create an interesting movie. Now, you can get your Sinister Six movie in Spider Man Three without introducing the Sinister Six entirely, because now you have Mysterio is not dead. I I I, re, I don't believe that Mysterio died again in this movie it, it, because, like, I don't think I I, I gotta, when I rewatch the movie again, I'm gonna look I'm gonna listen to see. I don't think Edith ever confirms that uh, that. Um, Mysterio is dead, um, and I think they could always bring him back in some way, um, there's, there's, there are ways that they can get around doing that, um, be it, because the thing is, he's, he's all technology, he is the master of illusions, and that's really one of the things I really loved about this portrayal of him, is he's a, he, he's, he looks like a special effects guy, he looks like an, like an Andy Circus guy in a, what's it called, uh, in his motion capture suit, um, it's it's so cool, um, and it, it 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 feels really true to who the character is. Um, he uh, in the other thing in this movie that's worth uh, about about that is life model decoys. Life model decoys we know exist, and it doesn't need to be a good one. It needs to be just an android that gets shot, um, and he's you know somewhere else. I I feel like that's a contingency he may have had in play. Um, but again, I can't be certain. Um, I like how deeply tied this movie is to the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a way that other Marvel movies kind of can feel disconnected, especially with the sequels. Like, the the plot of Black Panther can't happen the way it happens without Civil War, yet it feels disconnected from Civil War. Um, like, uh, The Winter Soldier feels very standalone. This one feels tied in. It feels like a chapter in a long book. Um, because, like, when, when you're going through, um, at one point in the movie when he, when it's revealed who, um, what's it called, when it's revealed that Mysterio is the bad guy, spoilers, um, and he takes off the, uh, the costume and the practical costume and he's going and, and he gets into, he's in that scaly, it, it, it's designed to look like his classic comic costume, that green scaly look he's got, um, and he, when he's he's in the bar, they're introducing all these other side characters who were there. He was there in Civil War when he's introducing Barf, and you know that in um, what's it called? Uh, in the uh, there's another guy who's there, and they introduce him and they show him he's the guy that Obadiah is yelling at in Iron Man One, and this is going a ways back. They're, I, I want to know how that decision happened. How did you get to that point? Um, but yeah, uh, the, the first half of the movie is slow, and I think that's what, fundamentally one of my problems with this movie is that the first half of the movie feels kind of, this like, I don't want to say disconnected or disjointed, um, but it feels like, um, it's, you know, they had two separate tones going, and that second half of the movie, I would say, 
I don't know if it's second half or if it's uh, the third act entirely. I would say from the point that Spider-Man, we find out who Mysterio is on. That's about the midpoint of the movie. Then the movie's really good. Um, because it feels too much like teenage hijinks up until that point. And then now we're in Spider-Man being Spider-Man at that at, at that point in the movie. And I have no, nothing against teenage hijinks in the movie. It just it feels forced for the first half of the movie. They're trying to pad the runtime a little bit. Um, like Betty and Ned's relationship feels weird. Um, and not in a way that it's just awkward to watch. It's just kind of like... It's it's very it's kind of endearing, but it's just kind of like out there, I guess would be the right word. Um, and uh, like Peter plotting to get with MJ, and it's it's kind of like you get that second hand embarrassment, like oh this is not going to end well for you, Peter. This is a bad idea. Don't do this. Don't do this. Um, but then once that once we find out who Beck is, and Beck's having that big celebration with everyone in the bar in uh, in Prague. It that's when it starts to pick up. That's when it um, uh, what's it called? That that's when the plot really kicks in the high gear and it feels right. And uh, he he, when we find out who everyone is and what they're doing, and we find out that it isn't actually a multiverse. But it, I, I have a feeling they still could pull it, pull the multiverse. That'd be pretty cool. But they they actually had me interested in the trailer. I thought, and I think I said it on thirty minute reviews. I said that I think they're gonna do like the Flash season two, where at the end of season one of the Flash. Um, because he's opening up that breach to go back in time, there's the, uh, the, the breach is appear all over Central City and, um, to all the different universes. In, uh, at the very end, Jay Garrick's helmet flies out of one of the breaches, um, and then in the beginning of season two, Jay Garrick appears and he's like, hi, I'm Jay Garrick, I'm the, uh, the Flash of Earth 2, um, and that was, and then it turns out he's not, he's really Zoom, and it was, uh, and all of that. That's what I thought was going to happen, where it was going to be, um, Earth, like, uh, whatever, Earth 533 was going to really be real. He was just going to be a villain coming from there, pretending to be a hero. Um, and he, he's coming, uh, and, and he comes to Earth, and, you know, they, they unmask him. I'm surprised they didn't go that route. Um, but on, on the other hand, I feel like it was a good decision. Um, I feel like that's a big concept to introduce right after Endgame. Um, so I see why they went with that. Um, what else was there I wanted to address? Um, but I did really... I, like, the movie was really good. It's it's not like Rogue One, where there's a lot of movie you got to get through to get to the end of the movie. And then it starts getting good when Vader shows up. Uh, this, you need... Uh, the, the, you only need to get through half the movie before it gets really good. Um, if you haven't seen it, which is po- probably more than likely at this point, considering it's... Uh, Tuesday, the movie just came out today, um, definitely go see it, it's, so, it's, the, the sequence with, uh, Spider-Man, um, facing off against the illusions that Mysterio is creating, hands down one of my favorite things to happen in any Spider-Man movie ever, it's, it, it's, it feels right out of a comic book, when he's dealing with Mysterio's illusions, um, and then, there, there are a lot of really, there's, there's probably, one of it's it's up there now. One of my favorite movies in the entire Marvel Studios, mm-hmm. you know, pantheon of movies, um, where uh, he goes to he calls Happy to help him, and he gets on the uh, they get on the plane, and uh, he Happy shows him the lab that he could design his new suit in, and he's he's filling around with the web shooter, and he puts his arm through it and picks his hand up, and he got the hologram on his arm. And you can see this look of pride on Happy's face because Tony did the same thing when he got back from the cave in Afghanistan or wherever the fuck he was in the Middle East. When he gets back and he's designing the Mark II, he does that same thing where he puts his hand in and he's he's holding it up to see how it comes out. Um, and then he blasts uh, ACDC. And I, I still probably the best line in the movie is uh, Peter Parker going, "Hey, I love Led Zeppelin." When he starts playing uh, "Back in Black," which is the first song we hear in uh, Iron Man. Um, in a way, this felt like a kickoff of Phase 4, but we know it's the end of Phase 3. Um, and they, they say that in the beginning, where it's like, it's time to close this phase of your life, uh, and move on to the next phase. Uh, it's time to move on to the next phase of our lives. Um, I really, I, I liked that. That felt like a, a, a an acknowledgement that that's the terminology they used. Um, so yeah, so, go see this movie. Very well done. 
Um, and, and Jake Gyllenhaal just gets a few opportunities to just chew the scenery, and it's so good to watch. Um, because he's he's very good in the role. Uh, Tom Holland comes back as Spider Man. He's fantastic as well. Um, and I I I feel like Fury wasn't quite Fury, but then when you get the poster that scene, you understand why he's not really Fury, and it feels kind of weird for the entire movie. Um, I feel like that was because they. They they had never really given Fury a movie to you know explore what he is as a character and how he acts and how he reacts because a lot of his time in movies is just him giving a pep talk to the Avengers or dealing with Carol in um, Captain Marvel and they didn't really have time to see how that would go over with him uh, what's it called with him dealing with uh, like there was no time to see the receptions of that movie then edit this movie in a way that was meaningful so they they kind of had to play it safe. And then having uh, having him and Maria not really be him and Maria, having them be Talos and his wife uh, from Captain Marvel, is it kind of a it was kind of a great decision um, to kind of explain away why he was acting kind of weird in the movie. Because um, a lot of people really liked and gelled to hit the interpretation they went with for Captain Marvel. Um, so yeah, so we'll wrap up there for today. There's going to be another movie later in the week. I have no idea what it is yet. I'll probably go to the movies next week, and, uh, next week though. Um, or probably Friday morning before work. I don't know yet. Um, but, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely check out Spider-Man Far From Home. I cannot recommend this movie enough. Um, I went into it with low expectations, which very pleasantly surprised. That doesn't sound good. Either way, go see the movie. Um... And, oh, uh, Thursday, we have, uh, we're gonna be doing our first, uh, deleted scene, um, deleted scene interpretation, um, and we're gonna be doing it with our movie of the week, which is, uh, Independence Day, um, because the actual comes out on Independence Day. So, uh, have a great rest of your week, we'll be back with, uh, another movie on Friday, I'll tweet out what it is, uh, and we'll be back then. Have a good night.